grab a snack, grab a drink. Today is a long one because I am doing my top three products in every single category. And if you know anything about me, you know that I hated every second of this. I spent an hour last night picking, pooling, putting back the top three products. So um, if I forgot a product, don't even mention it in the comments. Okay, this is what I'm sticking with for now. This is the second year that I am doing my top three favorites in every category. So you can check out last year's to see how they compare. We have some repeats. I also added some new categories because cream, blush, and bronzer are such a big category of makeup this year. I've made a cream blush and bronzer category. I've made a eyebrow gel and pencil category. So it's super duper long. Shout out to the beautiful Michelle Wong for originally coming up with this idea a couple years ago. And yeah, I mean, it, it's a really, really long one. I had to mentally prepare my husband who edits my video for this one because... <laughs> You got a lot of work ahead of you, Jose. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with my top three in the makeup primer category, which this one I'm very surprised by because I have had my staple primers for years. And this is the year that it all changed. My preferences changed. I don't know if it has to do with, I'm wearing lighter makeup nowadays. I live in a humid climate. So I actually prefer lighter glowy base with less complexion products. So so that is why we're all different. So first we're going to start off with the Chantecai Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint. This is really pricey but totally worth it. It is exactly as it sounds. It's a sheer glow rose face tint, at least behind the most natural rosy glow to the skin. It makes my skin look glowy without being too greasy looking and it's extremely lightweight on the skin. It's the perfect makeup primer slash skincare hybrid because Chantecai creates beautiful skincare products so yeah this is one of my top three primers it's amazing we also have the hourglass vanish airbrush primer this is both hydrating and smoothing to the skin another beautiful one that i tried out last year and that's exactly why i love it extremely smoothing and extremely hydrating i am going to go a little fast on these because you just gotta know these are like top three this is a big deal because I got a big collection, so these are the ones that I am using the most right now when it comes to wanting my makeup to look really good. Like, okay, I'm going on a tangent here, but all of these products are products that I would reach for when I want to look my best, when I want my makeup to look flawless, if I'm going to a dinner, if I'm going to an event where I want to look and feel my best. It's a combination of these products on my face, most likely. So then the last primer that I have is from Say. This is the Star Glow Glowy Super Gel. This is a brand new addition to my collection. So I don't know if it's actually top three, top three, or maybe it's like just exciting because it's new, but it's been one of my most used primers the last couple of months. So I wanted to put it in the top three because this is exactly what I'm looking for for my skin nowadays is the really glowy, dewy look. This one is glowier than the Chantecaille, but it has more of a translucent finish to it, which makes it really beautiful. I think it looks great underneath makeup or on the skin alone. It just gives that dew and healthy look to the skin. So I've been loving, loving, loving this. It really has shut up to one of my favorite primers, obviously. And then the big category is foundation. We'll start off with the new addition here. This is from Hourglass. It's the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. Every time I wear this foundation, I feel like my skin looks poreless and super duper soft. I have this on my skin right now. I love the way that this leaves my skin behind. It just looks so plush, so soft. It really is a truly luxury foundation with a luxury finish. This is a second year winner. This was in last year's. This is a Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick and I decluttered it last year actually because it was just old and I was like, I don't want to buy a new foundation, especially since this is like $90. And then I repurchased it a few months ago and I don't know how I even live without it for a period of time because this is one of my favorite foundations just to throw on. It makes my skin look really perfected, really smooth, very, very hydrated. It doesn't have a powdery look at all. It looks exactly like skin. Truly one of the most beautiful finishes that a foundation can have. It's one of the most natural but still gives that perfected semi-full coverage look and it's so easy to blend out. It's easy just to throw on just on your red spots. It's extremely versatile. 
And then this last one is an old one that I've fallen in love with once again. Not that my love has ever fallen out of place, but this last year I've been reaching for this for events because of how long wear it is in the Florida humidity. So this is the Armani Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation. So when I filmed this video last year, I was still living in Maryland. A lot of my preferences for base has changed since being in this new climate. And I feel like this foundation just hangs out so well in this weather. It leaves my skin looking great for a very long period of time. It's perfect. It's not too matte. It's not too glowy. It's not too light coverage. It's not too full coverage. It's just that perfect in-between foundation. So I loved this years ago, but I love it even more now when my wear time is even more important. All right, concealer. We only have one new addition this year, and I'm so extremely shocked that this ended up being a top three concealer. It was hard though, because for this new addition, I was in between a number of concealers, but I ultimately decided on the Urban Decay Naked Quickie Ma uh, Concealer, not mascara. I always mix those two words up and they aren't even close. But <laughs> anyways, I love this because it gives a full coverage look. It still has a lightweight feel and it wears a really long time. It doesn't look too creasy or too dry on the skin. It's a heavy duty concealer. And I was in between, there's some really natural concealers that I love, like from Tom Ford, Haley's Beauty, a lot of great concealers could have hit the third spot, but this one is definitely the one that I've been using the most. So I wanted to put this in and it shocks me because I always really love this. But when it came down to making decisions, I was like, oh my gosh, I think this actually is like my third favorite, which leads me to my top two, which were no brainers. The first being my Pat McGrath Labs concealer, which I have three of. No questions asked, it's amazing. It can be beautiful as a foundation. It works great on the under eyes. It has a very hydrating look. It's extremely full covered without looking too heavy. Truly just one of the best. I feel like mine are kind of expired now, so I could definitely benefit from re-upping on this, and I will, without question. I'll pay full price for it because I love this concealer. One of the best full coverage ones. And then this one is probably the most versatile of the three from Too Faced. This is the Born This Way. I feel like it's very smoothing, very hydrating, looks really smooth on the under eyes. And again, I like using this all over my face for foundation or for a light makeup day with a really glowy base, like one of the primers that I mentioned. And then putting this on the cheeks and the under eyes and blending it out. And my makeup looks pretty flawless without even having to had used a foundation. I mean, I've used this one for years. It is always featured in videos in my top favorites, must have, must purchase videos. So that is why this had to be in the top three. So Pat McGrath and the Too Faced were no brainers. Urban Decay, it was a tough battle, but the Urban Decay, it did come out on top. Now let's talk powders. This is the exact same lineup <laughs> as last year. Huda Beauty uh, Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder, one of the most blurring. This year I used the Cherry Blossom Cake. This is a one that I just purchased in a new shade. I like the light shade and I like this shade as well. Hopefully the demo is doing it justice and you can see why I like it. It's a very fine powder and extremely smoothing. And then the drugstore counterpart that sometimes I feel like might even be better than the Huda Beauty, but it's a really tight race, is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. The difference is the Huda Beauty is a little bit more lightweight, whereas this Maybelline has a little bit more of a heavy feel to it, which I think is really good for extremely long-lasting full coverage days. So that's kind of the difference here, but they both provide the same level of pore eraseness. Like, <laughs> it erases the pores to complete, just smooths right over them. These are the only two powders that do it. They are incredible. And then in terms of a pressed formulation, the most blurring, the most lightweight, the most amazing, specifically under eye setting powder, it's from Pat McGrath. It's the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I have purchased probably like five of these. That's how amazing these are. They are extremely fragile, so that's the con to these. They will break just through sitting in the drawer, but it's worth the repurchase because it's so 
lightweight and really, really blurring. And I like that this one is in a pressed form. Would love to get a loose form of that formulation. Cream bronzer, this is a new category. I only did a bronzer category last year, but cream bronzers and blushes have really taken the makeup industry by storm. So I truly feel like they definitely deserve their own category. So the first cream bronzer that I have is from Rare Beauty. This is the bronzer stick. I use the shade Happy, no, Always Sunny, no, Happy Soul. <laughs> Happy Soul is the shade I use in the demo. This is one of the easiest bronzer sticks to use if you are a beginner with cream formatted products. This is the one I would recommend because it's extremely malleable. The stick, I think, makes it easier to place the product down. You can use a brush over top as well. It's a really easy blend, a nice lightweight formula. So very good for beginners. And then this is like my snatched cream bronzer. So if I really want to snatch the face, I want to... I'm using the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in light medium. This is not as malleable as the Rare Beauty, but it still works out beautiful. It's this shade in particular that is my perfect like contour, but still able to be worn out for everyday color. So I'll use this and then like a warmer powder bronzer over top. And this just gives me the cheekbones and it lasts all day because I said it wasn't as malleable, but it does not budge and it's still pretty easy to work out. This is incredible. I am 100% of the time using this for like my makeup events when I go to influencer events because you know, I gotta look snatched for those. This is what I'm using. And then for more of like a bronzery everyday vibe, this has beat out some favorites, man. When I picked this up, this is by Say. This is the Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer in Light Bronze. I've been reaching for this over my Chanel, over my Huda Beauty. It's just a beautiful formula to blend out onto the skin. It's more of a bronzery shade, but it still isn't too warm. This is just perfect. I keep grabbing for this. I've reached for it for almost a year at this point that I've had it. It is my favorite cream bronzer in this pot form. And I like the pot form because it's just so easy to put your brush in. Okay, now powder bronzer, I have three. I think I only have one repeat offender. So the first one that I have is from the drugstore. This works like a luxury bronzer for me. This is a Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. It does have a luminosity to it, but it's not a luminosity that emphasizes fine lines or anything. It has a nice kind of warm but still a little bit neutral color. This is a great color to put over top of the Makeup by Mario contour and I love the veining in here. Like I said that give it that slight luminosity which I think it's a good almost hourglass esque luminosity that almost blurs the face a little bit. So not only is this a gorgeous formula that's extremely easy to blend out but it also is on the more affordable side. It's a drugstore product. And then I also have this one from Ilia right here. This is the Nightlight Bronzing Powder in the shade Drawn In. This one, again, it's warm, but it's like a soft warmth that has a little bit of coolness. There's a little bit of golden in here as well. It's just a tone that really flatters my skin tone. It's actually quite similar to the Flower Beauty, which is probably why I love it so much. And it's such soft, formula as well that's very easy to work out. And then the third bronzer, this one was in last year's. It's pricey, but every time I wear it, I love it. This is the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer in the shade Terra. And I feel like this shade also kind of snatches my face. Every time I wear it, I'm like, has my diet been working? No, it's this bronzer, which I know bronzer technically doesn't shape the face, but it can. Okay guys, it can, and this does, and this is a stunning formula. And this is very, very overpriced, but I'd buy it again if I lost it, because it is that good. I mean, two years in a row, it's made this list, so maybe I should do this video every single year, because it's always kind of fun to go back and reflect and see how things change. Okay, let's go into cream blushes. So the first one that I have has been a longtime favorite of mine, and even though I've had this for years, this last year, it really has creeped up into a favorite of mine. This is from Nude Sticks. This is the Nudie All Over Face Color in the shade In the Nude. I'm 
always reaching for this color in particular, but I love the formula of all of the colors. And this one I like because it's not like the creamiest, wettest formulation. So it lasts a really, really long time in the Florida heat. And this color is just perfect for every day. It goes with every makeup look. I've been using it especially even more because I don't know Sophia Richie she was using these because I believe she's some sort of ambassador slash director for the brand so I've been thinking about these more and this is the one I always reach for and then I also am in love with the Rem Beauty cheek and lip stick not maybe the shade in particular but the formula really malleable and one of the only cheek and lipstick that I actually feel works equally as good on the lips and the cheeks. That's a very unique quality to me when it comes to lip and cheek sticks. Just one of the best I've ever used. I don't know, I, I love this formula so much. It beats out the Ilia, it beats out any other cheek and lipstick that I've ever tried because it actually works for the cheeks and the lips. And then the last cream blush that I had, I struggled because there was like liquid and cream blushes that I really loved. I was like Charlotte Tilbury maybe, but in terms of number of use, I always find it extremely appealing to reach for my Tower 28 Magic Hour blushes. These are so creamy and they look extremely hydrating on the skin. They have a beautiful range. I would say the two that I use the most are Rush Hour and the Magic Hour. And these are not called Magic Hour, by the way. They are the Beach Please blushes. I was just reading the name of the shade, but these are both so beautiful, but I love all of the shades. They're extremely easy to blend out and they go so beautifully over like bare skin. So on my lighter makeup days, my glowy primer, my concealer as foundation, this on the cheeks, just a quick pat and go. These are what I'm reaching for. Now for powder blush, I have three. This is another oldie but goodie that just was on the rise of use. This is from MAC and this is the classic Melba blush. It's just such a pretty peachy blush that's great for every day. It looks beautiful over my nude sticks in the nude blush. If I'm ever unsure about what blush I wanna use, 99% of the time, I find myself reaching for this lately. It's just a great, reliable formula. It applies good to on the skin. The color is yummy. So this one is one of my top three blushes. Here is a repeat. This is from All May. It's the Healthy Hue Blush in the shade Nearly Nude. This works like a luxury, luminous blush. The finish is gorgeous on the face. If you want a good, luminous blush that's not glittery and is affordable, this has the most beautiful sheen. This is like my favorite discovery ever from the drugstore where I had picked it up at random and I just have held on tight because it's so good. And then the last one, really any hourglass blush in general, but the one that I reach for the most when I'm reaching for an hourglass blush is the shade Mood Flush, which actually just launched in their Blush and Glow palette as well. This has been in a couple and you can buy this in individual. This is like the perfect pinky mauve blush. It's so beautiful for when I do cool looks. I often want to reach for this. And if you don't know my spiel on this, Hourglass in general just has one of the most unique powders in the industry that I feel like cannot be replicated. So even though I feel like this is the only hourglass powder that I featured in today's video, all of, across the board, they do have like the best of the best powders. I don't know how they didn't end up in any other mention besides the blush, but I love their powders so stinking much. Okay, let's do highlighters, powder highlighters. I skipped cream highlights because I don't like cream highlights, but what I do like is the Rare Beauty powder highlighters. These really came and killed the game. I also love the Charlotte Tilbury, so that's kind of where I was like, Charlotte Tilbury Rare Beauty. And honestly, I do find myself reaching for the Rare Beauty more, so that's why I had to mention it. So I'm using the shade Exhilarate today. It's just a really easy, smooth formulation. It's very, very glowy, but I don't find it to be unflattering. If you have more mature skin, I'd recommend the Charlotte Tilbury more. That one's a little smoother, but I find myself reaching for these more, so that's why I picked these. They are a great new addition to this list. And then this one I mentioned last year as well. I'm always mentioning this little Shreddy girl. <laughs> I'm always mentioning this little Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. There are four different shades of highlighters in here. 
They apply so smooth to the skin. I love the options of colors that this quad gives. The formula is stunning. They've launched other shades of this in the past that were limited edition. I need permanent additions to this. And then the last one is just like my go-to everyday highlight when I don't know what to grab for. I just need a beautiful highlight to finish off the look. I'm reaching for my Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Glow Highlighter. It's just the perfect champagne shade that leaves a customizable sheen to the skin. And what do you mean when I say that is it can be a lighter layer, it can be more natural, and then you can have a heavier layer for it to be a little bit more like pop, you know? And this is not bad over texture as well, considering the glow that it gives. And then to finish up complexion, I actually picked two setting sprays because I have one go-to long-lasting setting spray and one go-to glowy setting spray. So my glowy one is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine face mist which is all the way at the bottom here you better believe i already have my backup ready to go i love the smell of this and i love the instant glow and burst of hydration that this gives my skin so i used to not believe that setting sprays actually did anything to the finish of the skin and then i discovered this one and this legitimately leaves a glow to my makeup that I didn't have before. So I love this. And then for long lasting purposes, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray did the dang thing, okay? This really does help my makeup last longer. Smells delightful. Also helps make my makeup look better. It is, it, I mean, it does the job, you know? There's a lot of setting sprays that do absolutely nothing. This ain't one of them. Okay, so let's move on to the eye products. Starting off with the eyebrow category, I picked up three eyebrow pencils that I wanted to share with you. So the first one is the M Cosmetics Fine Liner Brow Pencil. If you are looking for the finest tip eyebrow pencil, it is got to be the M Cosmetics one. It's not too pigmented, it's not too creamy. You have so much precision with this so if you are drawn on a whole new eyebrow I definitely recommend this one this is one where like sometimes I'll forget about it and then every single time I reach for it I will go through a phase where I use it every single day because I'm like oh yes that's the business the next one that I have is the Issa brow defining pencil this is just everything that I would want in a pencil liner it's also quite fine a little thicker than the M cosmetics has a good amount of pigment but still isn't too pigmented not too creamy the same spiel that I had about the M cosmetics is what this one had and then I'm going through these quickly because there's only so many adjectives to describe a brow pencil but this one is thicker this is from elf it's the instant lift brow pencil so this is what I like for some quick and dirty brows again same thing I don't like it too creamy I don't like it too pigmented this isn't I have a good amount of control with it considering how thick it is but I like it for just quick fill in brows days where I'm not as precise and did I mention it is only three dollars let that sink in. Eyebrow gels. This has been the year of eyebrow gel discovery for me because I've I've changed up the brow routine. So these give me some nice, hold, fluffier looking brows. The number one, the holy grail, the one that I need to repurchase because it is starting to dry out a little bit. It leaves a little bit more flakes than it used to on the brow, but if you get a fresh one, that won't happen. The Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. If you want that fluffy look in a brow gel, you need to try this one. This one will give it to you. Your brows will stay in place all day. It manages to make my brows look more full, look like I have more hairs. It makes them last all day. It is the best brow gel for that fluffy look. Another one that I really like that's stronger hold than the Too Faced is from Refai. This is what I like on my no makeup makeup days. So on days where I have minimal makeup on my complexion, this is what I'm using because the hold is so intense and my brows don't even need a brow pencil when I use this. This is from Refai. It's their brow wax. So it's stronger. It's more intense than the Too Faced. I would say the Too Faced pairs nice with filling in the brows. I don't fill in the brows with this one, but it's so good. Again, one of the few that really holds my stubborn brows up all day. And then for something less intense, just for every day, for a more natural style of brow, I love the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. So if those waxy styling ones are too intense for you, I do recommend this one. It still keeps my brow hairs in place all day without being too strong. So this is my favorite everyday 
kind of go-to brow wax. This one is also great. It's not a wax, it's a gel, excuse me. Amazing. Eye shadow palettes. Now you know this one was a triggering for me because I just did not know there are so many palettes for so many different reasons why I would keep them. I was like really trying to throw a Kaleidos palette in here because I love the formulas and the finishes, but I had to go with my favorite. Okay, you'll see why. <laughs> so I actually have two Natasha Denona palettes. So the first one is the Glam palette, which I believe was in last year's as well. This is my neutral cool toned dream palette. It's the one I have on my eyes today. If I could only like wear one makeup look for the rest of my life, the eyeshadow would probably be picked up from this palette. It has so many beautiful lid shades, very easy to use mattes. So for today's look, what I did is I started off with the shade Blend and I put that in my crease and blended it out. It's a nice light brown shade. And then in the outer corner, to add some more depth, I went in with the shade Smoke Out here to do exactly that and smoke out the outer corner. And then to finish off, because I decided I really was feeling the depth today, I went in with this lash line shade and really focused it right only on the outer corner without over blending it, but to give that extra element of depth. And then to finish it off, the last thing I did was use this shade right here, which has a little bit of pinkiness to it. They call it the center eyelid shade. Just pop that baby all over the eyelid and I have the most simple, pretty eye look. I love it. Now for um, the next one, also a Natasha Denona palette. I've talked about this recently and if I could only have one palette, it would probably be this because of the versatility that the Natasha Denona Biba has. For a while, like I've always known this palette was amazing, but I didn't really notice how amazing it was until the last year or so because it has every single neutral color you can need, but it has the three different tones. So we have the cool toned row, the warm toned row, and then this one is, I don't know how you describe it, but it's like the brown row. Any neutral shade that you're going to need is in this palette. And you guys know I mostly wear neutrals. So even though this used to not be my favorite because I did consider it slightly boring, you know I've come to the realization that I am boring. And I love boring eyeshadow and this one does it. And the quality, I mean, the only competitive brand with Natasha Denona is Pat McGrath. That's not true. There are some other competitive brands, but love these. Love the artists behind them. So this one is my favorite Pat McGrath Labs palette. This is my fun palette for today. This is the Mothership 3 Subversive palette. This to me is what embodies Pat McGrath Labs in a brand. It's a shame she doesn't create palettes like this beauty before. It's unique. It's fun. It's different but you also are able to get neutral looks with this and then a pop of color. This is one of the best curated palettes and they managed to do it with just 10 shades. Some of the most fun formulas and finishes. I will die on this hill saying that this is the best, most creative palette, most well thought out, best curated palette ever. It's fun, it's funky, it's still neutral if you want it to be. It's versatile, love this. So those are the three that I guess I'm having. Two neutral palettes and my one fun palette. Now I did add another new category which is eye glimmers. I added that because nowadays, since I wear more natural makeup, <laughs> beauty queen, I am really into like the one and done eyeshadows. So these are my favorite kind of single one and done shadows. So the first one I have on my eyelid right now, this is from ColourPop. You cannot beat the Super Shock shadows. They're great for the price. And they have some really fun finishes. So this is a shade Amaze. I've always loved this one because it gives the prettiest shimmer to the eyelid. It's beautiful on its own. It's beautiful over another shadow if you just want that little extra bit of glimmer. So I did have this shadow from the Natasha Denona on my eyelid, but I used this to add that little extra pop at the end so this one is great and it's affordable another one that i like to use is from hourglass i mean this is just pure great quality these are the scattered light glitter shadows i don't have a shade in particular i chose the shade smoke because this is probably the one i use the most but again anytime i want a glitter shadow this one is a good one to go to because it's not a thick glitter shadow so it doesn't crease it's a really thin lightweight formula but has some very fine glitter particles in here 
This one has a little bit more pigment, I'd say, than the ColourPop shadow that I showed you. But yeah, it's just a really refined, lightweight glitter formula that lasts a long time. A formula that a lot of brands cannot replicate. It's Gorge. And then the last one is a thicker formula, but it really is very reflective for days that I just want something really unique and shiny on the eyelid. I'll use these for beauty events because I know they're just going to look good with the lights. It's the Touch and Soul Metalist Sparkling Foil Pigments. K-Beauty has a lot of products kind of in this style. So this is thicker than the Hourglass, but it's more like flaky, which leaves more of a textured look on the eyelid. These are beautiful to just pop on on their own or again with a base underneath. And they have some neat colors which go really good with like different colored bases. So I don't have a particular shade of this as well. I will say probably the most unique shade that I'm often using is Sun Aurora. That took me way too long. All right, so let's do eyeliners. I picked three, one liquid, one gel, and one pencil. That's just how it worked out. I didn't intentionally set out to do that. But the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen, this is my trusty dusty eyeliner pen that I always talk about when I'm recommending a liner. It is the most expensive liner on the market, but I think it is worth it because it lasts forever and the wear time is amazing. And I find that I take no time at all to do my eyeliner. There's something about this that just makes eyeliner so quick and easy. It has two sides, one really small marker side and then another one with a longer marker side. So honestly, I use both sides. I'm not really too picky about which one I prefer, but both are incredible. Doesn't bleed, just the best liquid liner that I've ever used. And if it makes applying liquid liner easier, call me in. I will do it. Okay, and then I have a gel liner. This is a good old MAC Black Trek fluid line. I find that for me, this is the most easy way to apply eyeliner. I'm often reaching for liquid liners because I'm lazy, but when I really want my eyeliner to look good, I'm reaching for a good gel pot. And I've just always come back to the MAC Black Track Fluid line. It's an oldie, but a goodie. I'm honestly due to pick up a new one. I need to go to the store and just buy a bunch of stuff from MAC. <laughs> I love this. It lasts a long time. It's not the blackest liquid liner, but I let it pass because I love the consistency of this. I think it's incredible. And then the last one is a pencil liner. It's from Jones or Beauty. So this is a new addition. I only tried this in the last year. This is the best pencil in the shade brown. I love a good brown eyeliner for my more natural makeup days or sometimes just for filling in the lower lash line as well. This is great. This applies like an eyeshadow. So eyeshadow eyeliner is a lot easier than a liquid or a gel. And this, I don't know, there's something about the texture and consistency of this where it applies with such ease over the eyelid even if you have like more mature eyelids where it's as, as smooth as an application as an eyeshadow would be so i love this it's amazing mascaras i think we have two repeat maybe i can't remember if i put this in last year's but i don't know why it wouldn't the green essence lash princess it just looks great like i don't have much lashes to work with but you can see them i do have falsies on but you can see them this one I always every time i wear this i feel like my lashes look great it gives me length it gives me volume it gives me a decent separation not amazing but great this has always been a reliable mascara for me just like the armani eyes to kill mascara really great lengthening mascara it's very, very black, so that helps my lashes be more visible as well. Love this one. It does flake a little bit, which I don't love that. It's turned me off a little bit, but I still am always reaching for this. <laughs> and then the last one, which gives me the best separation, the best length, even gives me lift and some volume, the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. Man, this came into my life and just completely changed it in the realm of mascaras. It's my do it all. And the thing that makes it stand out the most is how much lift it gives my lashes, which naturally point down here. So <laughs> we love this mascara. Now we have lip liners. I mean, I'm always using these three, so I had 
to talk about them. The first one, Pat McGrath Labs Contour. This has been a favorite of mine forever. She's gotten really tiny. This is the perfect color to add a shadow around my lips to make them look more plump. And the Pat McGrath Labs formula lasts forever. Really quick, easy, smooth application. Similar, but a little bit of a drier formula and a hint more warmth is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Anywhere Caffeine, but kind of has the same effect on the lips as well. These two are very, very similar, I'm not gonna lie, but I reach for both because I love them both. So they both are my most used lip liners. And then lastly, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in the shade Pillow Talk to Medium. This is a My Lips But Better color. I also very much enjoy the Charlotte Tilbury formula. It's quite creamy, but still lasts a really long time. And I love this shade because it's a hint darker than my natural lip color, which makes my lips look even more plump. So I have my two contour type colors, especially since I love a good neutral lip. And then I have this guy right here, which is my lip color, but but prettier. Okay, lipsticks. I picked three and I was like, how do I wanna break up the lip category? Cause you know, there's liquid lipsticks, there's lipsticks, blah, blah, blah. I decided to just do lipsticks because I don't wear liquid lipsticks like that. I'm mostly just going for a comfortable lipstick. So my three favorites, the one that I'm wearing, we'll start off with that, from Merit in the shade Baby. I love the packaging of this. You could convince me that this lipstick is $50 with this packaging. And it's, this is the most beautiful like pinky mauve shade. Great for every day in an extremely luxurious, comfortable formulation. Love this one. This is one of my new staple colors. Not new, but new of this past year. And then the last two are shades that I've had forever. You know the deal. Pepper and Honey right here, or Oh Honey, or Hey Honey. I think it's Oh Honey now. These Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks last forever, by the way. I've had this for years. But this is my good luck lipstick. It's my favorite everyday neutral lipstick. It looks great with the neutral look. It's kind of more on the beigey side. It's stunning. It has the glowy formulation as well, which makes your lips look plump and keeps them hydrated also. I've talked about this plenty of times. And then Natasha Denona in the shade Natasha. So when I do a cool look, I use a dark brown lip liner, and this is the best shade to wear with any cool tone look, especially a blue eyeshadow. Now don't get the one from the My Dream collection, that one is more purpley, which is honestly still really gorgeous, but this is like a true neutral nude shade. So whenever I do a cool toned look, not whenever, but most often, like if I'm doing a cool toned look and I'm looking for a lipstick that's going to match it, Undoubtedly, this one will at least cross my mind if I decide to use something else. And the Natasha formula is also extremely soft, creamy, and comfortable as well. So the formula matches up with my love for the color. Lip glosses, I picked three. I separated lip glosses and lip oils since lip oils are such a hot topic this year. But lip glosses, so I'm currently wearing, this is the new one in this year's video from City Beauty. It's the City Lips Plumping Lip Gloss in pink nude. This is one of the most plumping lip glosses out there. It doesn't feel minty on the lips, but it smooths over the lips and makes them look so much more voluptuous. And this shade pink nude is my favorite. And these look gorgeous on their own as well. If you get one of the more sheer colors, this pink nude has a little bit more pigment, but again, stunning. You know the drill with this if you come back to my channel and watch my videos. Pat McGrath Labs, Dare to Bear, my favorite nude lip gloss. Just like the City Beauty, this one is a little thinner, but it gives a really smooth look to the lips and this color is great for making the lips pop out more because it will highlight the lips. It has a pretty gold sheen to it. It goes with a lot of different colors as well. Colors that go with my typical everyday lip shade. I love the Pat McGrath Labs lip gloss formulation in general. You can't go wrong with their, what is it, their Black Friday lip gloss sale that they normally have over winter where you can get it for like $10 a lip gloss, $12, something like that. Amazing, this one is a shade I use the most, but I have so many Pat McGrath Labs lip glosses that I love. And then good old Fenty, what is this? <laughs> How do I not know? The Gloss Balm Fenty Glow. This is my go-to purse lipstick. Particularly have it in the small shade so that I can put it in my purse. Again, a really nice plumping formulation. 
makes the lips look really juicy. Just good, reliable, comfortable, lightweight formulation. I mean, this is worth all the hype, in my opinion. I have so many shades of these for a reason. And it goes with every color, by the way. And any makeup look, on bare lips, whatever. That lip gloss is so easy to grab for. And then to finish this off, we have the new category lip oils and this was really easy because these are easily my top three favorite lip oils. First one, Clarins in the shade Patea. Amazing. This gives me a really plump lip look. The way that this lip oil shines, it's one of the most reflective lip products that I own, but still really gives like a glassy, smooth appearance to the lips. Extremely comfortable and like all lip oils, very hydrating. And the other two are quite similar. I just prefer the Clarins the most probably, but the House Labs lip oil, I have mine in the shade Tint, gives a very similar effect. A little lighter weight, I would say, than the Clarins. And then the Dior Lip Glow Oil, probably the most hydrating of the three. Nice and thick, very smooth on the lips as well. I would say when it comes to the lip oils, these all have a very similar effect to the lips. I have a type when it comes to my lip oils. So if you like something comfortable and you like something very reflective and juicy looking, in the words of Kathleen Lights, these will give it to you. All three of these. And you can see I really like like a pinky kind of lip stained watermelony color. Oh, we did it, you guys. Those were my current top three products in every single category of makeup. I don't think it would be humanly possible for me to do just one. Like we have to keep it top three in every category because if I did one, I would easily lose my mind. <laughs> so good thing it's top three. And even then with the three, I was like, <gasps> how could I? How could I pick? I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, I'm still like looking at my table, assessing like, is, do these really deserve to be in this video? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I will have all of the products that I spoke about today linked down below for your shopping convenience. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Oh, make sure you like this video and subscribe and do the whole thing if you want to support my channel. And I'll see you later. Have a good one.